UIM F1H2 World Powerboat Championship returned to San Nazaro for a stunning doubleheader with the Grand Prix of Regione Emilia-Romagna, followed the next day by the Grand Prix of Italy, rounds two and three of the 2022 season. Located in the province of Piacenza of the Emilia-Romagna region in northern Italy, San Nazaro Dongina is a quaint and picturesque town located on the banks of the famous Po River, familiar waters for many drivers and teams that test and practice there on a regular basis. The locals are no strangers to the world's premier speedboat racing series. Team Abu Dhabi's manager Guido Cappellini bases his mobile training facility here. San Nazaro also has its local hero competing, driver Alberto Comparato. He wowed fans the previous year by winning the qualifier and taking pole position in spectacular fashion against the field of hardened veterans in only his first year as a rookie. Now let's take a look back at the last round in Macon, France. The 2022 UIM F1H2O World Championship season kicked off in Macon, France, hometown of Cédric de Guin and his team Maverick. It is a tight circuit that runs through the middle of Macon, perfect for spectators. Charge team Sammy Celio came out swinging, winning the pole position. Celio led the race, but disaster struck in lap 38 when a mechanical problem forced him off the circuit, handing the lead to Torrente, with his teammate Daniel Kamsi immediately after him. Third place went to the French driver of China team Peter Marin, who was able to control his fourth position at the start and going on to third place after the withdrawal of Sami Celio. Behind the leaders, an epic fight for fourth position unfolded between defending champion Jonas Anderson and Gilman Racing's Alec Beckstrom. The Finnish rookie was able to hold the defending champion in a great show of racing. So, Torrente leads the world standings going into the Grand Prix of Regione Emilia-Romagna with Alcamzi in second and Peter Murray in third. Defending champion Jonas is fifth. teams and 14 drivers competing at the San Nazaro Dongina doubleheader. In the driver's seat is Sean Torrente of Team Abu Dhabi. He has two world championships under his belt, but missed his third last year to Jonas Anderson, and he is keen to get that third championship in 2022. Well, last year just slipped away at the end, and, you know, that happens. Um, you know, the year before, or I should say in 19, when I won the second one, you know, I won it on the last lap. So I had some good fortune come to me that way. And, you know, all you can do as a driver and as a team is just keep knocking on the door and keep working. Um, it's important for me. I really, really want to win this one. We're leading already. We won the first race um, because it's a, it shows a level and a sustained excellence, which is really difficult, you know. Um, anybody can win a race, honestly. Anybody in this paddock can win a race. A select few can win one world championship and even a smaller group can win multiple. So I've already won multiple, but I want a third and a fourth and I'm kind of greedy, so I want to keep going. His teammate is the veteran ace, Daniel Kamzi of the UAE, who finished runner-up to his teammate in round one, sitting second on the world standings. Third in points is CTIC China F1 team's hard-charging and ever-consistent Peter Marin, alongside three-time consecutive world champion veteran Philip Schiaff. Uh, this morning we make uh, many tests, but uh, some trouble with the engine, problem issue, and uh, maybe it will be fixed uh, right now. We'll see what's happened. We have no time to uh, find a good uh, qualification prop, so we'll see what's happened now. Last year's world champion, Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden, is looking to make it two in a row despite finishing fifth in round one. His teammate is Kalle Vipo of Finland. France, I had a small problem with my engine, so it was not uh, delivering the, the power it should. And uh, yeah, I, I should be happy to arrive in five and get some points because it was a very bad power. Now it's fixed, and uh, hopefully, we can get a better result here. Teams and 
drivers were raring to go for the qualifying time trials in a quest for pole position. There were three qualifying rounds. The field reduced to 12 after Q1, then six after Q2. Comparato, who won the pole last year, was blazing in Q2 and was the fastest driver going into Q3. Alec Vekstrom failed to make the cutoff, just missing out by one position in seventh. Behind him was Bartek Marshalek in eighth position, a personal best in the past three years. It's a couple of seconds on the last lap, I missed it, but anyway, I'm very happy because after two years of some strange experiment with other boat, I'm back to my old and lovely boat and I'm happy. In Q3, six boats had 10 minutes to lay their fastest laps. Comparato was off the pace in this all-out battle in Q3, struggling behind the field. Sammy Celio laid down a blazing lap early, 42.25, and led throughout. Both Team Abu Dhabi drivers, Torrente and Al Kamzi, and Philip Schiap of CTIC China were all unable to beat Celio. The checkered flag went up and Sharjah team thought they had it. But Torrente was still completing his hot lap. He found that perfect drive. What a run. Torrente crosses the line with a time of 42.09 seconds to take pole position. I drove, honestly, a terrible Q2 and the boat pulled me through it anyways, and then I knew in Q3 I just need to make my lap. And then the last lap, when it all mattered, with no time left, it just was, it was beautiful. The boat was perfect and made a perfect lap. So Celio gets second, Shiop third, and Anderson fourth. Bartek Marshalek is in the middle of the pack in eighth. Peter Marin starts back in 11th, plagued with engine issues. First race of the weekend doubleheader in San Nazaro, the Grand Prix of Emilia Romagna. Today we start uh, five position. I try my best. Uh, we have a long race, uh, 44 uh, lap, and we try our best to get in uh, top three. Engine problems for Moritz Stromoy. The changed engine starting from the back of the grid, but uh, it's better to have a fresh engine than started in the middle and have a problem. So, let's see. Sean Torrente was on track for the points he needs to secure a third world title, but will he get through okay without breakdowns or crashes? The boats all lined up and ready for the start of round two, just seconds to go. The boats launch off the dock, Philip Schiap off to a flying start as he leaves the field behind. Terrible start for Sean Torrente, struggling on the opening straightaway and falling dangerously behind. Beckstrom is neck and neck with Alberto Comparato in the 97 boat as Beckstrom starts to peel away and fan out, heading to the commitment buoy. Three-time world champion Philip Schiap of CTIC China team leads the pack. Sammy Celio is ahead of Sean Torrente, but Torrente has the inside lane advantage. They come out of that turn neck and neck and lock horns in a long drag race down the far end of the course. Behind them, Shiop goes wide and Jonas Anderson moves up to fight for third. Torrente maxing out his boat on the inside and edges ahead of Sami Celio before the turn to take the lead. What a move from the American Team Abu Dhabi ace. Jonas Anderson has held that inside lane through the turn and now finds a speed to take on Philip Schiap as he sweeps past at the right-hander and seals the deal. He finds himself on track for a podium if he can hold point. Alec Beckstrom in a fight for eighth with Ferdinand Zandbergen. He zooms past on the inside. Great racing there. But up ahead, it's Bartek Marszalek, the Polish driver, having moved up two spots and in seventh position now. He pushes hard on Alberto Comparato's tail, trying to find a way to nab sixth. Sean Torrente, the two-time world champion, is leading proceedings ahead of another two-time world champion, Sammy Celio, in second position. Jonas Anderson has wrested third position from Philip Schiap, who has dropped since leading early. Team Abu Dhabi's Dani Ankamzi is in fourth position. Peter Marin is in 10th position, up from 14th and still on the prowl. Peter Marin is going all out, driving with a mission as he rips through spray and wave to find a way past Beckstrom. Philip Schiap almost loses it on that turn as he's desperate to claw his way back up to third and get past Anderson. Four boats locked in a battle for sixth position. Alberto Comparato, Bartek Marshalek, Ferdinand Zambergen, and there goes Alec Vekstrom, neck and neck with the Sharjah team driver. 
Beckstrom bobs and weaves and puts everything into that corner as he takes eighth position from Zandbergen. Beckstrom is storming through the course. Great racing. Peter Marin is one of the most tenacious racers. He's a tough driver to have on your tail, and Ferdinand Zandbergen can feel the pressure as Marin is relentless and passes the Dutch driver on the inside to take eighth spot, coming all the way up from 14th. No change at the top of the pack. Sammy Celio still giving chase to Sean Torrente in the lead as he's about to lap Moritz Stromoy in 10th position. And Celio gets hit from the port side. It's a huge crash. Stromoy and Celio collide. The Osprey rescue team is there within seconds. And Stromoy is unhurt, but her boat is in bad shape. Here it is again. Stromoy cuts in too early, not leaving room for Celio to lap. Celio also realizes he's damaged and the boat is sinking. He too is out. Yeah, we are lapping Marit Stromoy and inside and she hit me outside of that one. Of course, I coming fast, I want to lap her and we ask for the radio, keep the room. I cannot understand. This is her experience. There's no excuses. She did big, big mistake. The race goes under a yellow flag and the boats line up ready for the restart. The green flag is up, the race is back on. Torrente has a great start and Anderson now finds himself in second position behind the American. Shiap is racing hard against Comparato to the buoy on the far end. Shiap cuts in and Comparato crashes and goes right over him. Wow, here it is again from Vekstrom's camera. It's going to be another yellow flag. Comparato is okay and unhurt as he gets out safely. His race is over. Uh, Comparato inside. He cannot turn, but he, he push. I had a good uh, restart, and then I don't know, maybe sharp, because I was in near in side by side with him and he just turned it to me. As the race resumes, Torrente has another good start, solidifying his lead ahead of Anderson's second, but the battle rages now for third spot between Alkamzi and Vekstrom. Alkamzi whips to the inside as Vekstrom goes long on the corner, and the Emirati veteran defends third position. Torrente has had to survive two yellow flag bunch-ups, but has dealt with them masterfully, holding his lead, and the experienced racer just has one final lap to get through now. Jonas Anderson, the defending world champion, is on track for a runner-up finish and a crucial 15 points in his campaign to defend his world title with Alkamzi in third position and on track for a podium. And there it is, another great victory for the Team Abu Dhabi ace. Sean Torrente takes the Grand Prix of Regione Emilia-Romagna. Jonas Anderson on Team Sweden, runner-up, with another Team Abu Dhabi podium double as Alkamzi takes third. Man, let me first say, honestly, we've had our issues in the past, but Sammy is a professional. He had me beat to the corner, and uh, you have to leave a lane, and I trusted that he would leave a lane. I didn't back off and stuffed it in there, and came out deck to deck, and we ran, I mean, inches apart down the front straightaway with full respect, and I'm glad we can trust each other like that. Motor did not start. I made a good start, and I passed Shap on the first lap. So I was third, and uh, then the the accident started to happen and I was just lucky to, uh, to, be, uh, to be second because the setup was for me today was only for the start and it was totally wrong for the race. So. However, Dani Alkamzi was penalized post-race for not staying in his lane around that commitment buoy at the start where he had cut across to gain what was deemed an unfair advantage and that gave Alec Vekstrom the third step of the podium instead. <laughs> Alkamzi hands his trophy over to Vekstrom. Yeah, we finished fourth and we were happy with the result because we started seventh and it was a big fight the whole race because 15 last laps, the power steering went out, so I was fighting for my life to finish the race in fourth and then they tell me I'm third. Then we were happy to take the third and get some points for the championship. The race results, Torrente adds 20 golden points to his tally, leading the world standings on 40 points. Anderson with a crucial 15 points, placing him in second overall. Alec Vekstrom finishes the race in third, Marin fourth, Ferdinand Zamberg in fifth, Kalle Vitbo also gets points in seventh.
race day, the action started with the qualifying time trials in the morning. Drama began in Q2 when two Sharjah boats, Celio and Zambergen, were dominating with the top two spots. Celio was fastest despite being in his spare boat, it was still intent on getting a faster time. Just as he began another hot lap, he lost contact with the water and got huge air on the straightaway. He flipped and crashed. He was okay, but with his spare boat now beyond repair in the few hours before the race, there would be no racing for him today. Taking another look at the crash with such a fine line between flying above the water for the highest speed and actual out of control flying, it just takes one mistake. But Sharjah team still had reason to celebrate as young rookie Ferdinand Zanbergen oh, made the cut to Q3, second bravo. only to Celio. Meanwhile, Torrente, coming off a win the day before, was struggling and he just missed the cut for Q3. As boats headed out for the final shootout, Sharjah team's hopes were all on rookie Ferdinand Zanbergen. And he delivered, setting the fastest time early on, but with eight minutes to go, it was still anybody's for the taking. Alberto Comparato, who won pole last year, didn't have the right setup this year and was fifth. Daniel Kamzi and Philip Schiep, veterans and champions all, but they couldn't find the pace to take on the young Dutch gun. The minutes wound down as Sharjah team implored Sandbergen to keep cool, wait, and avoid any crashes or breakdowns. Stay calm, stay calm. Also P2 or P3, it's okay for you. Otherwise you end up like Sami and we don't want that. But don't make any shit. Eh? Defending champion Jonas Anderson was out last as Sharjah team washed with nerves on edge. The defending champion's first lap was not enough. Don't do anything. Don't do anything. The checkered flag was up, but Jonas Anderson had one more hot lap to finish. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. wait, wait. We don't lose still. Jonas Anderson tried, but couldn't get it. 4326, we have it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it paid off. The rookie got pole position. What a result and a huge advantage for Sharjah team. Feeling great. I'm still a little bit shaking because uh, it's uh, a little bit uh, untrue for me now that uh, I get the, the pole position. In the beginning of this day, I didn't thought it was possible, but we did it. So I'm very happy. Somebody know how to drive the boat in this team. Yeah. <laughs> Al Kamzi starts in P2, followed by Shiap in three, Anderson in fourth, and Comparato in fifth. Torrente will have to rally back from seven. Race two of the San Nazzaro Dongina doubleheader, the Grand Prix of Italy. Crowds gathered along the shores of the Po River. Peter Marin needed a last minute boat change as the CTIC China crew hustled to prepare the spare boat, replace the engine, and stick Marin's number eight on it. In pole position is Ferdinand Zanbergen with the best seat in the house, but can he fend off the colossal might of Team Abu Dhabi beside him on the start pontoon? I will do my best. I will uh, keep the boat in one piece. That's the goal. And uh, can I say, I hope I will win. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker, get a win. It's the last season. Win. Boats line up on the dock, tensions high before the race, Sandbergen ready for perhaps the biggest race of his career. Just seconds to go now, Jonas Anderson has a jump start, off the dock seconds before the lights go out. Further back, Alec Beckstrom is off to a good start as he leaves Torrente behind in seventh and Bartek Marshalek in ninth on either side of him. Excellent start for Zambergen. The Dutchman in pole position off to a great start on the crucial opening straight away to the commitment buoy as he pulls ahead of Daniel Kamzi in second position. Jonas Andersen started in the lead, but that jump start will be penalized. Nevertheless, Zambergen still manages to overhaul Andersen with Al Kamzi second. Meanwhile, Sean Torrente has recovered and has number 97, Alberto Comparato, in his sights in P6. Peter Marin passes Cedric de Guin to seal ninth position. Calevipo also on the take, and he snatches 10th spot from de Guin. 
Sigh of relief, no doubt, for Sharjah team as their rookie driver has survived the most critical part of the race and managed to hold on to the lead, but now he has to hold off four world champions with eight world championships between them. Bartek Marzalek takes on Vekstrom to turn the buoy, but Vekstrom whips past him and maintains P7. Marshalek overshoots and Marin sweeps past on the inside. Marin now in eighth position, the hard-charging Frenchman up four positions from the start. Up ahead, Torrente has been busy as he passes Comparato wide on the outside. They lock horns in a drag race to the other end of the course and Torrente does it. The American passes Comparato to move up into fifth. Behind them, Peter Marin is pushing hard on Vekstrom, swinging around head to head with the Swede. Morin uses that outside lane and passes Beckstrom on the yellow right-hander to nab P7. Behind the Malay, Marshalek buys for his chance and almost hits the buoy in the spray. Anderson is dropped back to the rear of the field as a penalty for that jump start. Al Kamzi in second position behind race leader Zandbergen, but look at Torrente. He wastes no time as he zips through and overhauls Philip Schiap to take third position behind his teammates. Zandbergen has to fight nerves now with two hard-charging Team Abu Dhabi boats barreling toward him and he has to fight them off for 35 laps. That is a very tall order to say the least. Bartek Marszalek has been going all out all weekend. The Polish ace always on the attack but he goes a little too hard as he spins out and misses a buoy. Marszalek has to go around again and loses a spot to Kalevipo who moves up to P8. Oh no, big disappointment for Peter Marin, who was barreling through the field, and he's been disqualified for his boat number sticker coming off. Another driver drops out. This time it's Alec Vekstrom, the Gilman Racing driver, back on the dock with a host of issues. First no power in the start, and then the lift gets stuck all the way up, and I couldn't get it down. And after that, the boat started cutting the power all the time when I went fast. Then I went slow. I tried to go fast. Everything shuts off. Disaster. Back in the race with a reduced field, Jonas Anderson has passed both Maverick racers Alexander Bourgeau and Cedric de Guin, the Swede moving up to ninth spot behind Marshalek. Sandbergen still holding out in the lead under huge pressure, but so far no mistakes, no breakdowns, driving to survive and doing it well. But Alkamzi in second is behind him, desperate for a race win in his quest for a first ever world title after more than 20 years on the F1 circuit. Oh, it's a yellow flag. Team Sweden driver Kalle Vipo breaks down and has to be towed off the circuit. Bad news for Zandbergen as the field will bunch up for the restart. Team Sharjah and Zandbergen didn't want that. This will be a big test for the young driver. There it is, the green flag. Zandbergen survives with Alkamzi right on his tail, but the Dutch youngster holds point in the lead. So close to a dream finish now with a handful of laps left as Alkamzi and Torrente give hard chase. What a performance for him and for Sharjah team, but he still has to bring that boat home. Both Team Abu Dhabi drivers on track for a podium. Further back, Jonas Anderson has managed to pass Alberto Comparato. The young Italian bumped down to fifth as Anderson takes P4 in the final five laps of the race. There it is, the final stretch. Unbelievable. Ferdinand Zandbergen holds off the entire field and the might of Team Abu Dhabi as he brings his number 12 boat in toward the checkered flag. What a day for him and what a day for Sharjah team. No doubt happy to get one up on their Abu Dhabi rivals. I'm a little bit speechless. Um, yeah, the race went well. Uh, I had a great start. Uh, I was in front. Then a yellow flag came, so... Uh, the nerves came back because I was like, shit, now is everybody uh, in the back again? But uh, in the end, that also went well, and uh, I had a great restart, and in the end, uh, yeah, we won. Still a great result for Team Abu Dhabi. Torrente with third, still in a very commanding position in the overall, and Alkamzi still with a shot at a world title with his runner-up finish. Anderson finishes fourth, and Comparato fifth. No stopping us, no stopping us now. Oh, it was great. Um, had a good first lap, got rid of Comparado and someone else, and Wextrom beat me down good, but he was short prop. I pulled him on the other side. 
and then just kind of pick my way through. She had made a mistake, I pounced on that, and then uh, from there I was third, I was happy. I was like, okay, Jonas behind, no problem. My teammate second, I let him get some space. I'm like, I'm just gonna sit right here. Uh, yes, we start uh, second uh, place, but I have bad start. I keep going my boat until the first turn. I turn, I see my position where, and then I push hard. And then I have problem with uh, my trim, go up, no go down. Sometimes I slow, I go, I slow, I go. I say, listen, I finish the race better and I don't lose the race. I finish the race here. Yeah. <laughs> Result puts Torrente 17 points clear of his teammate Al Kamzi in second position in the overall standings. Jonas Anderson in third overall. Ferdinand Zambergen shoots up to fourth in the overall standings on 27 points, ahead of Marin and Vekstrom with 21 points apiece. And that concludes the incredible doubleheader in San Nazaro. See you in Olbia, Italy for the next round. Stephanie.